Okay, so we have completed our watercolor color wheel. And so now we are going to do um, our concentric circles and divide our triangles a little more in order to create our mandala on top of this here watercolor uh, color wheel. So the first thing that we wanna do is divide our triangles um, one more time. And I'm gonna use this um, strip of paper in order to do that as well as a, a ruler or straight edge um, and my pencil. So the first thing um, we want to do is from the edge of the triangle to the edge of the triangle we're going to line our paper up right there and we can draw a line across. And I mark right here, I've already marked here, but I'm going to mark where how long that is okay then i'm going to fold this in half so i can get the middle and where that fold is i make another little mark okay so when i put this on my triangle piece that is my middle and i want to mark that spot uh, on my paper if you can see it i've marked it right there okay now i'm going to use my straight edge here and I'm gonna line it up with that mark. And I'm also gonna line it up with the very center right here where all my lines cross. That's my second point of reference. So I'm gonna line it up there. I'm gonna line it up here. And then I'm gonna run my pencil all the way across, okay? And some of the colors, depending how thick you got the paint, might be a little hard to get the pencil to show up. So I kinda go over it a couple times, but um, now I've split this triangle in half and this one, okay? Now, I only need to measure the ones on, on one side, obviously, because it won't do the triangle or the pie piece opposite it automatically. So I'm just going to keep turning and I'm going to keep lining up my uh, piece of paper here. And sometimes like if your pie pieces are off tiny bit like this one's just a tiny tiny bit uh wider than the yellow one was i i kind of split the difference on either end or you can remeasure you can remeasure the whole thing but if you split the difference on either side um, then you'll get middle <clears throat> and then of course i line my straight edge up with that point and with the very center of my of all my pie intersections here and again run that pencil all the way across and i've now split this one and this one in half and they're evenly perfectly in half right so this one is a little tiny bit shorter than this one so again i'm going to split the difference mark it right there now of course because we may or may not erase some of these lines it just depends how many which ones we incorporate into our design and which ones we don't so we might erase some of these so drawing it really dark isn't the best idea um, but you'll notice it, they picked up my pencil really well on the green but the red is hard to see like it, it didn't want to draw on the red the red i got the red a little thicker it's a little shinier it's a little harder to get the pencil to um, show up on that one so just kind of play it by ear again split this one mark it right there in the middle line my straight edge up to that point and the middle of my and run my line across and I've split them both and I just keep going we're going to do blue now now blue is a little bit shorter on both sides and again I'm just going to split the difference also the paint is pretty thick on this one so it's going to be harder again to get the pencil to show up it's better to paint um, lighter to to not lighter you still want the rich color but Watercolor is supposed to have a lot of water in it, and if you didn't get enough water, you'll get it kind of thick and shiny. And then the pencil doesn't like to show up too good. Also, this is um, a dark color, so it makes it hard 
as well. But it, it's enough that I can see it. I don't know if you guys, you know, you can kind of see it. So as long as you can see it and find it when you're creating your patterns, you'll be okay. Okay, last one. Again, this one's a little bit wider, so split the difference. I mean, they should be relatively the same. If they're way off, then, you know, you got, you're going to have a little bit of problems. But a little bit you can just accommodate for. Okay, now all my triangles are split in half, each one. So now that that portion is done, but now what I wanna do is create my concentric circles. So I'm gonna bring back in my um, homemade little compass here and my little push pin. And I'm gonna put the push pin in the hole, um, the first hole, one end, either, either end, doesn't really matter. And I'm going to line that up with the very perfect center of all my pie sections. I'm gonna plant my wrist on one corner. Okay, I'm gonna hold this pin straight up and down and I am not gonna move my hand for all of these circles right now, okay? Now, I can see that I did this, this outer hole was the one I used to create the large circle. Um, actually, I probably didn't use this same one because they don't quite my my circles kind of sort of in the middle of this so probably used a different one um, than this but it won't matter too much I'll just come in one and that outer circle will be a little bit small okay so I'm just gonna go every single hole it's created on every line of my lined paper and I'm going to create my circle all the way around and I'm not lifting my hand. I'm not trying to draw these circles underneath my hand. I'm just doing all of them from one side of my hand to the other side. And that's it. And I'm being very careful not to move my tack the entire time because that'll keep my circles evenly spaced and help for my circles to line up when I get to the to the end. Okay, I have one more hole, but um, at the very, very center, if they get too tiny, I think it gets a little harder. So I'm gonna skip that one. I'm just going to lift the pressure off my wrist and spin my paper. And then I'm gonna bring this back around and I'm just gonna connect. Now, if I've, I tipped my tack a little this way, I could feel it and I'm off a little bit. So I need to make sure my tack is straight up and down and that puts me right back on center and it li they line back up. So if you're not lining up, you've probably tipped your push pin a little bit. When you spun your hand or spun your paper, you should be spinning your paper, not your hand. To make sure I get all the holes here. Okay, now I have all my concentric circles and all of my pie pieces are cut in half. Um, and I now have, instead of just 12 sections, I have 24 sections. Okay, so now we can get started on creating patterns, okay? So on the mandala, the pattern, we use these all these lines to help us create the pattern and to keep the pattern very symmetrical and even and balanced all the way around. Okay, so um, for example, in the middle, I, um, I like to do petals. That's just what I kind of like to start my center off with, with, with petals. You could do a lot of different things. You could create a little star situation or all kinds of cool things, but um, I am going to do a petal. And the way that I'm gonna do it is I have um, where the color splits here, I'm gonna use this whole triangle and I'm gonna do my, my petal around it like this. And to keep it even, it needs to touch everywhere. Okay, so I'm trying to make it dark so you guys can see it. So when I turn it to the next section, the next petal needs to be similar. Needs to touch 
in the similar places, right? I'm using this. So the petals almost touch at the very top and they kind of come out from the same spot. all the way around and I'm using, you know, two, two little pie sections. And I just keep creating my pattern all the way around and you just keep track and keep consistency by using your pie shapes in your concentric circles that you've created. Now, you have to really kind of kind of watch cuz like here my um my little pie piece is off a little bit. So, you know, the more you're off, the more your measurements are off or the more your painting was off, um the harder time you might have keeping your pattern consistent all the way around. Two more, I got two more here, and then I will have my first pattern done. Okay, so now I have my, uh, my flower petals in the middle here, and I can continue to come out and create um, layers of pattern. My patterns, uh, they can, cross over into each other per per ring they can take up one ring they can take up two or three um, so you can do a lot of different things with them and create more interest that way and then some of these rings you will I mean, when we're all finished we will ink the pattern and then we will erase out whatever pencil we didn't ink over right so some of these rings like i might choose to keep this ring around the outside of this center flower um, but i might i might do a row that takes up two um and i might not keep this ring right so some of your rings will be kept and some of your rings will be erased it just depends on your pattern so from here um I'm going to, let's see, I'm thinking about what I want to do. I think that I'm going to create, I like this other kind of petal. So most of mandalas are petals and leaf shapes, um, but I like this, this shape petal. And this time I'm doing it, you'll notice it's straddling the two, um, the two petals. And so this petal is in, it's, it's sharing the two triangles of its of the same color, if that makes sense. Where these, they straddle two different colors. Each petal straddled two different colors. These are gonna be within the same colors and they're gonna take two rings instead of just the one. But I'm gonna come up, kind of a little bit of an S. So I really encourage using, um, you know, researching some mandalas, researching some patterns so that you can create interesting, um, you know, mandalas with some interest of your own, create your own patterns. That blue is hard to see and hard to get the pencil to actually write. I'm kind of just denting the paint. Okay, so now I've got a second ring. And um, another thing that I, I like to do, I... Um, Here's one I finished. 
and I create my basic pattern and then I can go in and start adding all kinds of little details, right? So um, when you're doing this, you just kind of think about sort of your main um, pattern and then when you ink that on, you can then start adding all these little cute little details. So from here, I'm going to create, um, let's see, I'm gonna go one, two, three. So here's, you know, I took up this ring already. I'm gonna do one, two, three. And this time I'm just gonna arc all the way up. Uh, to me, this looks like a spoon, <laughs> but or a leaf, you could think of it as a leaf, but it creates, It's kind of a leaf or spoon shape. And again, I'm, I'm um, straddling the two petals that I created a second ago. And again, you wanna use your rings. So I'm bringing it and touching at this point and I'm trying to curve it and bring it back down to the top of this petal. And it's um, straddling colors again. These are sort of ways I can use to um, see where I want to stop. This one's hard in the blue, it's hard to Hard to see here. Well, I didn't quite go up high enough. Good thing I caught that. Fix it. One more. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> now what I will likely do, one of the things I like to do when I do the spoon one, I want this ring to be my um the like the ring that i'm going to keep i like to drop it down so that now the tip of the the large leaf part will be will extend past the ring that i um that i incorporate into my design just something i'll keep in mind as i'm going along um and so from here what i'm gonna do I am going to do a, um, it's another kind of leaf pattern that I, I kind of like. And basically I'm gonna use one pie section, so this will be a little more, and I'm gonna wanna try to go towards the middle of it, but I'm going to kind of do a little bit of an S and then swoop it down and connect it to this, this middle line. So. I get into a lighter color it'll be easier to see whoops got that one too far over it's not great to erase too much um, because it will erase your watercolor um, but if you make a little bit of mistake you can correct it probably start being able to see that now as we get into these lighter colors. There you can kind of see it. So it's like a, an S and then um, just an arc back. So S to the middle, 
arc back. Ah. You could tell this one I got, there's too much paint. And actually for being honest, um, I will say that a student painted the primaries and then I, I finished out the rest for this video and that's why um, some of these are a little like too dark. You needed less paint, more water in these primary colors and um, it would be a lot easier to create your pattern. Kind of okay I've got them all there now okay so from here what I would like to do I'm going to create one last like larger petal and I'm gonna create it. Hmm, that's not gonna work out. Oh yeah, it is, okay. So I'm going to split again. This is gonna come in between these petals. I will likely keep this, this circle here. Um, so I'm starting in the middle of the purple and coming in, or I guess this would be our blue purple, and coming into the middle of our regular purple section. Okay, I'm using three rows and two triangles. And it's the same one that we did here. Same petal shape, just bigger and wider. And I'm still, I'm using this center part to know where to go to and finish out at. You'll be able to see it now here much better. To the point. Down again. Okay, so there's my, you know, a more visible. Okay, and then I've left this outer ring because I like, I kind of like, if you'll see here, I, to finish off with scallops. So I'll leave this outer ring for scallops. And what I do is from here to here, I'm going to have space for three. I wanna to try to space it out to have three um, scallops per section. So that's the goal and come around three scallops per section. And you could see like, Mine are all off a little, and I can make corrections when I come through to ink. Three scallops per section. Three. Three, three, ah, those are very small there. I'm just gonna try to correct that right now. Three, three, ah. Three, 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 
three, three, and then that's it. We're all done with our basic um, pencil sketch of our pattern. You can really kind of see it through here. Um, and from here, I would start, I would do my ink for this basic. Um, I'm gonna use a fine point Sharpie to ink this. And then I would erase out whatever pencil I wasn't gonna use from there. And then I would start adding in all my little details. Um, I'm going to make the ink portion of this a separate video.